Good morning, everyone. May God bless you abundantly. We will soon make a prayer for you, you who are, you are sick, you are in pain. Right now you are in pain. Right now you are, you know, uh, cast down. You, you just tune into this program, perhaps as the last straw. You don't know what to do. Well, well, before you do something against yourself, before you do something that will not be the right decision to be done, I want to challenge you already. I want to pray for you right now. I'm going to pray for you right now. I have here a cup of water and I want to invite you now as you are uh, watching us now, prepare this cup of water, prepare a cup of water, a bottle of water, whatever it is, there in your hands right now. And the word of God says that with God, nothing is impossible. That's right. You are seeing that in the screen, these same words. With God, nothing is for with God, nothing is impossible. Let's check it out. If this word is true or if this word is validated, if it is already, you know, old, if it is already expired, better saying, because if it is true, then right now as we pray, right now as we talk to God, this negativity that it is there in your life, this pain that it is there in your body, this sadness that it is there now, that you are feeling right now in this moment, it is going to come to pass. It is going to cease in the name of Jesus Christ. So let us prepare ourselves for the prayer. Meanwhile, Write there, type there the, 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 the prayer request, the problem that you are facing. Type there because we are going to be praying. Let's present this water to God right now. When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. My God and Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, right now in this moment, I present this water to you. I present this water to you right now in this moment. And I ask you, my God, that you consecrate right now in this moment with your power, that you consecrate right now. And this person that it is sick, this person that it is in pain, this person, my God, who is cast down now in this very moment, when they drink of this water, the sickness, the pain, the disease, whatever that it is, putting them down, I determine, my God, that when they drink of this water, your power will be manifested and they will be healed and they will be delivered. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. In your hands, my God, we give and we surrender everything right now for your glory. In Jesus' name, you may drink of this water right now in this moment. With your eyes closed, right now in this moment, receive the touch of God. Receive your healing right now. Receive the touch of God in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Receive right now the touch of God and the pain that it was there. I determine and I command right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to get out, to live your body, to live your life, to live right now in this very moment. In Jesus Christ's name, all the pain and darkness and negativity to get out right now in this very moment. In Jesus Christ's name. And if you agree, say, Amen. Amen. Do you believe? I do. Check there yourself. Check your body. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do before. Without fear, with no fear. Do what you couldn't do before. Because right now in this moment, God, He has touched in your life. 
And you can be certain that you are now in this moment giving a step ahead from what you were before. I want you to type there your experience, your testimony. Type there what happened. Type there what God has done in your life today. Type there right now in this very moment. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, go ahead. Type there for God's glory. Now, uh, as you do that, we will also now participate or watch, better saying, this powerful story, this testimony that illustrates what I'm going to read to you after from the Word of God for you who say, who think, or you find yourself hopeless, not knowing what to do, not knowing where to go, not knowing how to do. Um, you are going to um, watch this testimony and then after I have here something separated for you from the Word of God, for you who find yourself with no way out. So pay attention to this story because definitely this story it is going to speak to you who find yourself perhaps hopeless. Let us watch this now. My name is Luis Montoya. I am 42 years old. I have a degree in advertising and today I work as a real estate agent. Because of my degree, my understanding was that the Universal Church was a specialist in religious marketing. That it was an institution which took advantage of the belief and faith of the gullible in order to benefit financially. I had this notion from very early on and it always pushed me away, not only from the faith of the Universal Church, but from any other opportunity that I could have had to know God. From childhood, news of the church was always very prominent in the media, beginning with Bishop Macedo's arrest. Whilst growing up with this image of the church, I went on to study communication and marketing. My understanding then was that the language the church used was so worded to bring them revenue and that they didn't benefit anyone except themselves. For me, the people who attended the Universal Church were needy, financially and intellectually poor. They had no one to turn to, so they resorted to a false hope by falling for the rhetoric that was being told. For me, this was all it was. I couldn't imagine it being any other way. My understanding was that the Universal Church had political and financial interests. It wasn't just financial interest, but the idea was that they collected people in the church in order to brainwash them freely, according to their own interests. For me, this was very obvious. In addition to this, I was very discriminatory, not only towards the church, but to anyone who attended it. For me, whoever attended the church had some sort of intellectual deficiency, so as not to understand and notice that they were falling prey to a lie. I was very self-righteous at the time. My understanding was that people were falling into a scam to be manipulated, to lose all their money, to be used for eventual political ideals. That was how I saw it. I had all the arguments necessary to see it that way, which was reinforced by my circle of friends, family members and the people around me. Everything supported me to maintain that view, which I noticed later on that this was nothing like what I had thought. I was living my life in complete discrimination against the Universal Church against evangelical churches in general, and I was completely closed up to the Word of God. I had a relatively good life. I had good academic training. I had a tremendous amount of support from my family, for which I am very grateful. I had good financial grounding. I got married and from then on, when, let's say, I was full of myself, having everything I could hope for, 
I ended up dropping the ball, so to speak. I didn't notice or understand the weight of the mistakes I was making and where this was taking me. I had no point of reference. My reference was worldly things. Everything was allowed. It was all allowed. I had no boundaries whatsoever. The art of being deceitful or bending the truth or doing whatever I wanted led me to addiction, betrayal and the destruction of my marriage. I did everything my way and when that happened I literally found myself alone. I was alone. Then I realized that the path I had chosen didn't work. It hadn't worked. I had no peace in my house or outside of it. I couldn't find peace anywhere. I tried going out. I tried doing other things, but I had no rest. We end up creating room for addiction because we try to fill ourselves with alcohol, cigarettes and things that bring momentary pleasure but a lot more problems later on. We end up completely lost, looking for friendship or advice from people who can't really help you. Despite everything I knew, my training, my postgraduate status, my experience, my traveling, studying abroad and everything else that I did, I didn't have the necessary knowledge to truly straighten my life. The first time I went to a universal church, I don't even know how I ended up there. I think that in the same way that I did wrong things and didn't even know I did them, this was how I entered the universal church for the first time. I didn't go there myself. I think it was the Holy Spirit who guided me to know who He truly was. When I came to my senses, I was already in the church. I even arrived in the middle of a meeting. I didn't understand what was happening. All I knew was that I was there. At first, I would take part like I was auditing the church, until I found the confidence to say, OK, I can actually see that only the Word of God is used in this place. It doesn't come from someone's mind. Truly, the work that is done, the word that is preached, all of the purposes and especially the financial parts are based on the word of God. This gave me the trust to attend and keep growing in faith. My baptism in the Holy Spirit was the solution to everything. It brought me peace. It brought me the confidence to resolve things according to God's will. This was when I really discovered what peace was. Up until then, I thought that peace was tranquility, or relaxing, or at a beach, or having nothing to do. But it isn't. Peace is to trust in your salvation. It is to trust God that you are doing His will, and I had this trust. I received the peace that I had never experienced before. I am married to a woman of God. My love life, which used to be a problem, is a complete blessing now. We serve God today, my wife and I. The relationship with my family is completely transformed. I had basically been expelled from their midst, but now it's a joy for all of us when we meet. My life has been prospering. Everything is in its place. Everything is in its place. Things are happening in God's time and everything is peaceful. Everything is peaceful, which is most important. Nowadays, I live by God's character and by what He directs us in His Word. I use everything that He gave me, the opportunity to learn. And all the knowledge I received in university and the languages I speak as tools. 
However, the main thing is the character of God, because this is what guides me in my business, relationships, in everything. This is what brings true results to our lives. If you doubt this, come and see. Compare your life and how you live it. The results you get, the things you do, and compare this to what God wants from you. How He directs things according to the Word of God. If you seek to know if this is true, and you want to give yourself a chance to know if this really happens in the Universal Church, you will be pleasantly surprised. The Universal Church, leading people to intelligent faith. Do you know who Jesus is? For the blind, he is the light. For the hungry, he is the bread of life. For the thirsty, he is the fountain of living waters. For the sick, Jesus is the cure. For the lonely, the faithful friend. For the accused, the advocate. For the lost, the savior. For those making random decisions, Jesus is the way. For the deceitful, the truth. For the dead, he is life. What a powerful story. What a powerful testimony. What a powerful testimony. Look what God has said. Look what God has done in the life of this person. But perhaps you think, but how is this possible? Why did this happen? How is this happening? Why? How? Well, Jesus said, look what it says there in your screen. Jesus, he said, I, um, you will go through Tribulation, you will go through tribulation, but I have overcome the world. Jesus said, you will go through tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So my friend, you who say, what to do for my life change? This man, he believed in this promise. This testimony that we just watched believed in this promise. He overcame himself and he overcame the world when he decided to make, you know, to make this choice, to put his faith in what, the, what God had prepared for him. And that's right, you don't need to be a religious, a religious person. You don't need to know much about the Bible. You don't need to be a person who attends church. Perhaps you even say, I have a very little faith with me right now. I don't consider myself a person with a strong faith. You don't need to have a big faith. What you need to have, it's the desire, the willingness, the, you know, the, the, this thing inside of you, of you wanting to change this situation in your life. And if that's what you want, then my dear friend, I do encourage you, like we always say, run to the nearest universal church that you have, that you can find. Because God, He is going to change your situation. God's going to change your life. Like He changed the life of this person, like He changed the life of these men, He's going to change your life as well. Because Jesus, He said, what? That in the world will go through tri tribulations, but be of a good cheer because I have overcame the world. And you can overcome as well. Not by your own, but with the power of God, with God Himself, you can overcome the world. So, I'll, I'll finish here now. I will put this beautiful song for you and I invite you to come for the church. If you have a church uh, nearby you, there where you are in your country, type, you know, search for the closest universal church and go and attend. And here you are in Sydney. We are in Liverpool, Blacktown, Chatswood, over, as in, in the different states. We are in Melbourne, we are in Queensland. The addresses are displaying there. And if you need more information, you can also give us a call in our number. So, but that's it. I want you to think about this testimony and to make a decision. You are free. You are healed. We prayed the miracle happened. But if you really want everything to change, do like one 
Do like that person did. Put your trust in what this word here says and your life will never be the same anymore. May God bless you abundantly. Until next time. Bye-bye. Don't cast me away. Don't cast me away.